Hello, and welcome back to the fish locker out on the rocks. Now we're on a, we're on a well-known rock mark. Down in Falmouth, you can see Falmouth in the background right now. The idea was to come down today to fish with some floats for garfish and mackerel. While the wind's still in our face, I can't really do that. So all I've done is I've stuck two rods out. One at about 100 yards of rain, one at 100 yards over there with the frozen mackerel on. Trying for like a thornback way or, or a bullhouse or something. Like that. Just, just until the, um, just until the wind dies down. And I was just my simple uh, up and over rig with a pedal hook. I think I've got uh, three O's or four O's on there. And, um, yeah, we're, it's just low water now, so we're going to fish all of the flood. I've, I've got a little rattling bite on the left hand side rod. One of the things with ray fishing is a ray will sit on a bait and play with it, so you can't strike too strong, you have to let it develop. We'll go through some of the rigs, some of the gear, and hopefully, we'll show you some fish. <laughs> In true fish locker fashion, didn't even get a chance to turn the camera on. Had a great slack line bite on the right hand rod. Now, I was fishing there because the, cause the wind's coming this way. The bait on the left hand side I put out on a grip lead and the bait on the right hand side I put out on a lead without any grips on so it was going to roll around. Got a good knock and then a slack line on it so I managed to run and get the rod wound down into it really quick. Got a cracking female thornback ray. See there, look, put right in the scissors on the panel. Come on. Every time I try and get the hook out, it tries to clamp down on my fingers. Cracking ray. Got some serious thorns on it, hasn't it? It's even got thorns on its on its underside as well. You can tell this is a female a female because the males have got like a long clasper. And you see here where it's starting to go pink. That means it's getting stressed out. So we'll get it put back in this rock pole here. We'll maybe get a weight on it, I reckon it's about five pounds. This is the rig. Like I said, it was just a round lead so it could roll about, and it was an up and over rig that you just. But all you do is you fish like that. So it's nice and streamlined and when it hits the bottom like that, all that happens is it comes off. What this means, what this makes sure of is that your, your bait is presented flat, tight on the bottom. What are they doing over there? We're obviously just testing their alarm system. But it was literally, it was just a little piece of frozen mackerel on, I think these are Cox and roll, 4 row specimen extras. Dead simple. He's a beauty, isn't she? Stunning looking fish. Well, we found a, a sheltered enough spot where we could get a float out. So Lizzie was fishing with a float and she's picked herself up. A nice little garfish. Now yeah, well, this one's only a really small one. You can see the teeth on it, can't you? There, look. In 
can see that was taken on just like a little strip of mackerel on a size 4 cox and roll bait holder hook. Look at those teeth. Now with these, I've had them two, three pounds, so this really is only a small one. Just put it there in my pocket. One of the uh, <laughs> one of the things with these garfish is they absolutely stink, and they just cover you in scales like that. Some people eat them; they're, they're actually known for having like a big green bone in their body. Watch them. Um, keep an eye on that for a second. I'll just quickly run through the rig that we're using. Now all it is is just a very simple sliding float with a stop knot, a little bullet lead. And I've got a, uh, I think this is a 12 pound fluoro hook length. It doesn't need to be this strong, it could even be lighter. I like a couple of loomy beads. Now all I've done with these is, when I've had mackerel feathers before, and the trace has become knackered, I've just cut it all off, save the beads and throw the rest away. And all I've done is got a little piece of belly strip off one of the frozen mackerel, and lashed it to the hook. Now it's only a really thin strip. And all we did was cast out as far as I could get it into the wind just wait for the float to go down and actually what you see is you saw the garfish jumping out of the water before the float went down. It didn't actually take the float down, you saw the fish jumping on the surface. One of the things that I've, I've found as well with fishing for garfish as well is if you cast out a distance and then really slowly retrieve it, so actually your bait is almost at the surface but just coming in, they'll chase it and they'll attack it. So we'll, uh, we'll let this little guy go and we'll hope for a bigger one, hope for some mackerel. Been having a little, a little rattling bite on the left-hand side road. Now there are an awful lot of small conger eels around at the moment. Too small to even get onto a four row. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and see what it is. Could even just be a spider crab or something. We'll have a look. Well, we found the culprit. Cheeky little sand crabs. They are quite good looking, good looking crabs as far as it can go, but annoying. Yeah, baits are getting, well, chewed. We'll fish it out here for maybe another hour. We'll have to retreat back. We might actually go around the corner so we're out moving. At least that way we can fish with the floats and try and get some more mackerel and garbage. Thought I'd take a minute while there's not much doing. Liz is still fishing with that float for garbage, which is just this one more fish. And we're getting, again, little tiny rattling bites on the bait. I'll just show you how I keep my tackle box. Now, this is only a, just a cheap generic one. Got it a few years, it's had, it's had a good life. But uh, I don't know if you can see that. I um, I like to keep some spare hooks and some spare bags in there, and my scales. Um, I keep a couple of little spare weights that I'm going to need for like my scratching power gun. I like these these rewinders. I've got two or three traces already made up on there, and the little bits. Everything that I'm going to need that when I'm just setting up, like when I first get to a mark, that's all at hand straight away. I've also got one of these. That I keep little beads and swivels in and I don't know what you low guys use but um, I've found that these are quite good I mean these are just a cheap supermarket one but it's it's like a Barocca tube and this is what I keep and my spinners and my lows in stops them from getting tangled into everything else a couple of hooks my swivels beads and um, the little bits of kit that you need straight away like my scissors and that, or my bait elastic. And then into the main part of my bag, this is where I keep everything else. Now I, I don't take an awful lot of kit with me. I've just got my spare lines, a couple of spare floats. This is where I keep like miscellaneous uh, like clips, swivels, bits and bobs like that. And my leads and just a spare spool. So I've just got a few hooks. Few bits of, a few bits of line, 
few extra weights. You don't need to take much with you. This is the and the more you take with you, the more you got to carry. That's all I see it as. Yeah. You guys, I know some people are incredibly organised. I just like to keep as little as possible with me. I think about what I'm going to be doing and what I could possibly encounter, and I have like a couple of little in me little mixed bags, like in here. I've got four or five different types of circles in there because some it might present itself. And I've got a set of sabikis there and little bits of weights and bits and bobs. But what I usually do is like when I don't throw stuff away. These are from traces that I've cut up before because I use them. Yeah. There you go. For uh, all the people that have been asking, that's what it's like. Oh, and uh, I don't know if any of you know, someone actually asked me this. What are these bits for here? These little slits. I don't know. I thought possibly putting like a float in there, but no, it's not. I don't know. So if any of you do, if any of you do know, let me know. I'm just going to run through double quick our page up. Now I've just got some frozen back up. I've just taken the fillet off. What I like to do with my baits is I like to cut them like that, so it's almost diagonal. And the reason being. This is the little chopping board that I've shown you before. I always remove it because if you start cutting on these rocks, your knife's going to be knackered in no time. Once you've got your almost diagonal piece, this is all I was using was just it's a four foot up length, a 40 pound mono, and these are four rows. Now all I do is if you go in about midway down, thread it through, thread it through again, then pull the eye almost through top hook of your pedal, take it about that far up, just wrap it around three or four times and then pass it through the top part. Then all you do is you take some of your bait elastic and just give it a good lashing. Now, frozen mackerel is never as good as fresh because, as you probably know, it goes mushy. So a good lashing of bait elastic will help you out if you're using frozen mackerel because it stops it all from falling apart, stops all the little crabs and everything from taking it to pieces. I've now got two hooks well proud of the bait and I've got a nice streamlined bait with a little bit on the end that moves around. To go. I'm just going to clip it up now to my up and over ring and I'm going to cast it out. Now this is the up and over ring that I was telling you about. There's the bait you just seen me make up. That's how it clips onto my main line. Now all you do with your hook length is come up and over that little clip. And then the bottom hook of your pedal clips onto your bait like that. Now when you cast this out when it hits the seabed that'll release your bottom hook and then your hook length will be laid out below the weight. I'll put a link in to show you how to make these. Same rig, rig as before, just a sliding float. And this time, a much better garfish. It's going crazy. Hey, look. You've got a really pretty eye. I don't know if you can see it. It's almost in the shape of a love heart. A little strip of mackerel on a bait holder hook. Now I 
will actually keep this one for bait. Ah, they stink. Yeah, look, that's all it was. Just a little stupid belly of a mackerel. And all I'd done was I'd just cast it out at distance. And was just very, very slowly just winding. Tide's fair flooding in now. The wind hasn't dropped off. We had a couple of garfish. It's just too much wind in our faces to be able to get the lows out far enough for the mackerel. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm just, uh, just using up the last of my bait. I'm just making up some nice big baits. I'll put two fresh baits out. We'll fish them out. And we'll, uh, we'll make tracks. We're about uh, halfway through the flood now. So the, the water's moving at its fastest. Still doing alright. I'll put them. Um, I've sucked them over. So both of them have got legs without grips on them. And they're moving about nicely, they're only covering maybe maybe 15 degrees. Okay. Any luck will uh, I'll show you either another ray or don't fish or both. Well, fished it out, and as you might be able to see behind me, I've got pushed right off the rock by the tide. But I fished it out until I could, well, until literally now. And uh, perseverance has paid off with a little dogfish. on the up and over rig with a frozen mackerel on a pedal and you can see tides pushed me off the rocks that I was fishing on behind us and um, it's getting pretty cold now actually so I think we might go warm we, uh, we got down here up bang on low water and had that thorn back rig pretty much straight after um, had a couple of garfish a couple of little, little knocking bites throughout the tide I mean it's about, about two hours before I water now so we've had like four hours of the, of the flood. Fish, fish right until he pushed me off. I just had that dogfish just at last knock And then I think we're going to wrap it up. We uh, a couple of garfish. Just too much wind. You can see the wind's running straight at us. So if we try to cast the floats out, just fight a losing battle. We'll wrap up and we'll have a walk back towards the van. And if we can find a sheltered spot, we might get the floats out again. If not, we'll just call it a day. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't um, wasn't ideal, but we made the best of a bad situation and um, got a couple of fish out of it. See you later.